Hi folks, my name is Dr. John Thomas. You are watching this video because either you or someone you love suffers with the symptoms of a thyroid disorder. I get asked a lot, what is it that I do in my office working with thyroid patients? So what I've done is I put together a DVD that explains a lot about what we do here in our office as well as a lot of the things that are out there in the literature and a lot of things that your doctor is not doing that could help you get remission of your symptoms and improve the quality of your life. Right? So what I've done is I've titled this DVD, The Unresolved Thyroid, The Metabolic and Neurological Testing and Management for Thyroid Disorders. My goals of this DVD is first and foremost is as a healthcare practitioner, I want to have maximum positive impact on every human being I come in contact with. Right? My job is to do everything I can is to improve the quality of my patients' lives. Second part, my second goal is I want to give you tons of information. Right? I want to give you tons of information on how you can beat thyroid disorders and how you can do it naturally because it can be done. Right? Third goal is I want to eliminate the fact that you are running from doctor to doctor. Right? I want to make sure that I'm the last doctor that you have to consult with looking for answers for what is going on with your body and why you have the symptoms that you have related to your thyroid dysfunction. Right? And lastly, and more importantly, is I want to reinvent your life. Right? There's no greater satisfaction as a doctor in seeing patients' lives transform in a very, very short period of time and giving them their life back so that they're able to do things that they have not been able to do for decades. So, 90% of the information that I'm going to go over with you in this DVD, you have never heard before. All right? So with that being said, I encourage you to grab a pen and paper and write things down. All right? Write down things that may not be clear to you. Write things down that um, relate to you. Write down any question that you may have that you can ask me or search or, or take back to your doctor that's going to give you answers or resolutions to what's going on with your body so that you can get your life back. I also encourage you to watch this DVD multiple times. All right? There's a lot of information in here. There's a lot of information you never heard before as I stated. So the more that you watch this, the more information you're going to pick up and the more light bulbs that are going to go off relating to your health. You can also visit my thyroid website, AtlantaThyroidRelief.com. On that website, i got a lot of information and a lot of other videos, uh, more in-depth in this video, explaining different things that could relate to your health and your thyroid issue. AtlantaThyroidRelief.com. And if you haven't already done so, I strongly encourage you to join my thyroid mailing list. I send out maximum healing secrets all the time, as well as new things that pop up in the literature relating to thyroid disease, as well as thyroid treatments, and particular natural approaches to get your life back. So let's go and get started. Your thyroid condition is a chronic illness. All right? It is a chronic health issue. Your body has been sick for years, and now you've just been given a label or a diagnosis of thyroid disease, low thyroid, whatever it may be. Now, a diagnosis of hyper or hypothyroid is not a death sentence. Right? A lot of patients get very, very discouraged once they get a particular diagnosis. But realize, it is not a death sentence. All right? It can be reversed. It does not mean you have no chance of living a long, happy life full of energy. Right? We see it all the time in our office. Patients' lives transform and they get remission of multiple symptoms in a short period of time. And that's what this DVD is about, and that's why you are watching this right now and looking for information on how you can improve the quality of your life and get your health back. So I'm here to tell you that there is new hope. Right? We see it all the time in our office. People's lives change in a short period of time. So who am I? Like I said, my name is Dr. John Thomas. I am a doctor of chiropractic. I am also a doctor of pastoral medicine. I'm board certified and actually have achieved diplomate status in integrative medicine. I am a board clinical uh, or board eligible clinical nutritionist. I'm a certified gluten practitioner, and I have hundreds and uh, hundreds and hundreds of hours of advanced training in functional neurology and functional medicine. And functional medicine, breaking that down a little bit more, is uh, more training in functional blood chemistry, uh, functional endocrinology, functional neur neurotransmitters, and basically what that means is a more natural approach to address chronic health conditions. So I want to state that I do not treat or cure thyroid disease or thyroid disorders. Right? I do not treat or cure thyroid disorders. I'm not an endocrinologist. My goal is to address the cause of what is going on with your thyroid. 
all right, to dig deeper, dig deeper than any doctor you've consulted with to identify the cause of what's going on with your body and your thyroid. Now, we can break it down into three major categories that we have to look at. Now, there's, there's subcategories with all these, but there's three particular things that we have to look at, we have to start with, to get resolution and answers so that you can get your life back. The first thing is, is we have to address inflammation. All right, we have to address inflammation from a systemic or a whole body approach. Second thing is, there's toxicity issues. All right, we have to find out what toxicity issues you have and support or eliminate them. And the third cause of thyroid issues is we have to find out what's going on with your immune system. All right, third cause is a decreased or an unbalanced immune system, and we'll delve into that a lot more later in this video. All right. So the causes of thyroid disorders that we have to address first are inflammation, toxicity issues, as well as decreased or unbalanced immune function. Right. So our goal is to support the body to allow maximum healing. Folks, it's all about maximum healing. All right. Now, can I guarantee you're going to get 100% remission of all your symptoms? No. But what we can do is put a, game, a program in place to start helping your body to achieve healing on an everyday, every week basis so that it can maximize itself to the, the most healing expression that it can get. All right? And realize healing takes time, but if we put the right things in place, you're going to notice in weeks and months that you're just continuing to get better and better. Okay? My goal is to help you find the most effective ways to enhance your immune system, decrease inflammation, and detoxify you so that you have the best chance possible of living a long and happy life. Now, I get asked a lot of times, well, how come my doctors never talked about inflammation or toxicity or immune function with me or have, de have delved deeper into the things that I talk about on this DVD when I consult the patients, all right? And I always state that, you know what, it's really not your doctor's fault. They're, they're doing what they can do or what they're trained on, all right? What I do is I want to read you a couple ex excerpts from this article. Now, this is something that I may have um, sent you already, um, but I, I give it to quite a few patients because I get this question a lot about how come my doctor doesn't know this or hasn't talked to me about this. This, this is a review of uh, about 20 peer-reviewed articles out of the literature, and it's titled, Why Doesn't My Physician Know About the Inaccuracies and Limitations of, of Standard Tests? The reason is that overwhelming majority of physicians, including endocrinologists, internists, family practitioners, rheumatologists, do not read medical journals. The overwhelming majority of physicians rely on what they have learned in medical school. All right? So they are doing the same thing that they've been doing for years and years and years. All right? they're, not, they're not advancing with the current literature that's out there. They're not on the cutting edge of these approaches for chronic diseases. An article published in the New England Journal of Medicine titled, Clinical Research to Clinical Practice, Lost in Translation. Dr. Claude Linfant, a medical doctor and also the director of the National Heart, Lung and Blood Institute, states, there is a great concern that doctors continue to rely on what they have learned 20 years before and are uninformed about scientific findings. Very few physicians learn about new discoveries from reading medical journals or by attending scientific conferences. Thus, they lack the ability to translate new knowledge in the field into enhanced treatments for their patients. Another article titled, Too Many Patients Never Reap the Benefits of Great Research, Dr. Sidney Smith, medical doctor, the former president of the American Heart Association, is very critical of physicians for not seeking out available information or plot or, and applying that information to their patients, arguing that doctors feel the best medicine is what they've been doing and thinking for years. Now, I always use this analogy that, folks, technology has changed. Uh, I'm just floored that we can take an iPad or an iPhone and do a video, uh, a real-time video conference with family across the country. All right, we weren't able to do that a few years ago. Um, you know, cell phones, computers, all this stuff has changed. In regards to thyroid, the approach is the same as 1961. So over, for over 50 years, the approach to managing thyroid disorders has not changed. Now. It's not your doctor's fault because there haven't been that many advancements in the, in the allopallic approach to thyroid disorders. There are medications to affect TSH, but there is very, very little other approaches or, or, or tools in their toolbox to be able to uh, help a thyroid patient. All right? And what this video does is we get into a lot of other approaches that are out there that your doctor just hasn't been inter introduced to. All right? <clears throat> now, 90% of hypothyroid or low thyroid function is caused by Hashimoto's. Hashimoto's is an autoimmune disorder of the thyroid. Right? 
It is not a thyroid problem. It's an immune system problem. And medical doctors have no idea how to address autoimmune thyroid. Like I said, there is no training. There is no medication. There is no protocols in place for an autoimmune thyroid disorder. All there are are medications to affect TSH as well as some bioidenticals to give you a little bit more T4. There is nothing that they can do for an autoimmune issue. However, there are multiple things that have been proven and published out there in the literature that you can support and manage an autoimmune disorder to prevent your immune system from continuing to attack your thyroid. And the thing is, is 90% of people that have low thyroid function have an immune system issue to go along with thyroid function. And this DVD is going to get really in depth into that approach on what that means and what our approaches are. Okay. So conventional medicine. All right. What I'm going to do is compare what your doctor is doing versus what we do from a functional medicine approach. Conventional medicine is geared towards symptomatic relief and a cure with drugs and surgery after the disease has manifested. All right. So it's a wait and see until you actually get a label or a diagnosis and then we can step in and give you the, the protocols that are out there. I always use diabetes as a great example of this. You can be pre-diabetic and there's nothing they can do until you're pre-diabetic. Your doctor just recommends, hey, you got to eat better and lose weight. All right? But the minute you become diabetic and you, your numbers hit the state where diabetic, hey, then we can come in and start giving you some medication. All right? There's not a great uh, preventative approach for that ex ex except for some vague recommendations. Functional medicine is geared toward wellness and prevention with nutritional and natural support before the disease is manifested. So it's a more of a preventative type approach because there are things that you can do before you get that diagnosis or before that label to start reversing those processes. The difference between the two is night and day, folks. All right? It really is. The, the approach that you're doing with your doctor <clears throat> is definitely warranted, and I'm not telling you to stop seeing your doctor, stop taking medications, because there is definitely a need for that. All right? But there is also a need for a more preventative and supportive approach to co conjunction to start transforming your life and having you go into remission of all these symptoms so you can get your life back. So, what causes massive inflammation, toxicity, and decreased immune function? I stated that my goal is to dig deep and find the causes of what's going on with your chronic health condition by addressing massive inflammation, toxicity, and decreased or unbalanced immune function. So we're going to get into the main things that cause these things. So the first thing is acidity. All right? Now, what causes the body to be acidic? All right? Number one, poor diet toxins, heavy metals, dental infections, and, and there's a lot more things, all right? But these are main things that can create the body to become very, very acidic. Now, your body needs to be alkaline to heal, all right? You need to have a body pH of 6.4 to 7.0, all right? That is a goal, all right? You have to be alkaline to heal, all right? So that is something that, hey, we need to look at as well as monitor to make sure that our pH is in that range. Now what we do is we look at first morning pH um, somewhere between 5 and you know 7, 8 o'clock to make sure that we are having a pH between 6.4 and 7.0. Very, very easy to do, very, very inexpensive to do, but it gives us a pretty good idea of what's going on from a functional perspective with your body's metabolism. All right? Now, what does it mean being acidic? All right? If you're acidic, you increase the risk for heavy metal toxicity. All right? You also have a welcoming environment for viruses and bacteria, which makes you more susceptible to colds and flus. Right? So a lot of patients with chronic issues, they, ha they are more sick than most everybody else they know, or they're very, very slow healers. Right? Being acidic, your body leaches minerals out of your body to buffer the blood, primarily calcium. All right? And with this, you start becoming or this leads to osteopenia or osteoporosis and a lot of females are very very concerned about that and they're taking all this cal calcium and magnesium supplementation support and nobody's even addressing or looking at that story right there all right well how can we stop your your body from pulling that calcium out of the bone to help buffer your blood to try and create a better balance and a more alkaline um, presentation so how does one become more alkaline? Well, you got to change your diet. You got to eat more vegetables. That's one way you can do it. The second thing is you can do supplemental or nutritional approach. All right, adding in minerals like calcium and magnesium, which you may already maybe be doing. But we got to make sure we're taking the right dosage and the right and a, a good quality uh, mineral supplementation, as well as aloe and the proper dosage of vitamin D. 
All right, and a lot of patients are deficient in vitamin D hormone, so we gotta make sure we supplement with higher dosages than probably what you're taking to make sure that we can start taking the body from an acidic presentation to a more alkaline presentation. The second cause is free radicals and excitotoxins. All right? Free radicals are um, damage the mitochondrial DNA of the cell. All right? And most people are very familiar with free heard of that term free radicals because it kind of leads to cancer. All right? So it's damage to the mitochondrial of the DNA of the cell. So what causes free radical damage? Number one, poor diet. A diet high in junk oils, which are your trans fats and your hydrogenated oils. All right? Uh, a diet with a lot of what I call white death, which are your white sugars, your white flour, and your white salt. All right? And another thing is food sensitivities. All right? Sensitivities or allergies to gluten, soy, yeast, dairy, and amongst the, um, other foods. Um, the second thing that causes free radical damage are toxic chemicals. All right? Hormones in meats, pesticides in fruits and vegetables. Uh, and third thing are heavy metals. All right? uh, metals, uh, mercury in your teeth, mercury fillings in your teeth. Uh, nickel dental crowns, aluminum in your uh, deodorant and antiperspirants, uh, as well as uh, heavy metals in packaged foods. Right? So these three things can lead to free radical damage. So what are excitotoxins? Well, excitotoxins are neurotransmitters which can cause cell death when their actions are prolonged. Right? Compounds such as glutamate, you may have heard of MSG, right? aspartate, which is NutraSweet, or artificial sweeteners, right? as well as homocysteine. These things we don't want high, we don't want them hanging around in our body very long. When aluminum bonds to excitotoxins, glutamate, and or aspartate, its entry into your brain is significantly elevated. Once in the brain, aluminum increases iron-induced free radical activity. So it creates a lot of inflammation in the brain, all right? a lot of wear and tear in the brain. And that's probably why we're seeing an increase in a lot of neurodegenerative diseases as well as neurodevelopmental diseases. Cause three, infections, all right, and this is a big one. We find a lot of patients that have chronic health concerns with chronic infections. Now, what are infections we see? Well, we can see dental infections, all right, due to previous dental work that just le or stays up in your gums that can wreak havoc on your body. Gut infections, things like parasites, H. pylori, candida, uh, or yeast overgrowths, right, as well as organ infections, things like liver flukes, or you know, yeast buildup in your pancreas, or fungal infections in your pancreas. Cause number four, autoimmunity. All right. So autoimmunity is big. Most people with a chronic health condition have some type of autoimmune issue going on, meaning that their immune system is attacking a normal healthy tissue, thinking that it's a foreign bacteria or virus per se. All right. So there, to explain what autoimmunity is, we're gonna, really quickly, is we're going to do. There are two parts of your immune system, your Th1 and your Th2. All right. And they should be in balance all the time. All right. You need to improve the, your immune system, but more importantly, you need to balance your immune system. All right? Your Th1, we call those are your T cells. Those are the Pac-Mans uh, of your body. Those are the ones that when you get a bacteria, virus, or something foreign to your body, they go out there and they attack it. All right? the, the, your Th1 system are the attackers of the Pac-Man. They gobble up those foreign materials. Your Th2 system are the antibodies. They remember the bad guys. All right? So they code the you know, the genetic expression of what that was, so that the next time you get it, you're able to fight it off so it recognizes before symptoms manifest, all right? And your Th1 and Th2 systems should be in balance all the time. You don't want your Th1 system in overdrive where you're attacking everything, nor do you want your Th2 system in overdrive where you're not attacking anything. You want a nice, healthy balance between those two parts of your immune system. Now, your immune system is a lot more complicated than that, but this is a very, very basic explanation of what we have to do to prevent your immune system from attacking normal healthy tissue. So what can we do to improve TH, uh, our TH2 immune system? So if we're in overdrive and our TH1 system is, is, is high and our TH2 system is low, there are things that we can take to ramp up our TH2 system. Those are things like part, uh, pine bark extract, green tea, resveratrol, lycopene, caffeine, okay? and vice versa. What are things that we can do to ramp up our Th1 system? Well, vitamin A, C, and zinc, astragalus, echinacea, licorice, uh, garlic. All right? there, there, there's a list of, of, of the common things that you see in a lot of nutraceutical products that are there to help stimulate or balance immune function. Okay? Now, here's the thing. 80% of your immune system is in your gut. 
right? And this is well proven in, in the literature. 80% of your immune system is in your gut, right? So people that have poor immune function or unbalanced immune function typically have gut problems, whether it be an infection, um, inflammation, but one of the biggest problems that we see with patients with chronic health conditions, right? one of the biggest problems that we see is a condition known as hypochlorhydria. Now, to understand thyroid disease or thyroid disorders, we really have to understand how the thyroid works. We have to understand the metabolism or the physiology of thyroid. All right? We need to understand what type of symptoms you may be experiencing as well as uh, how does this whole process work and how, what is your, doc your doctor doing with medication recommendations and what does that affect them physiologically and more importantly what are the things that they are missing or not addressing okay so your thyroid itself is a gland that sits right here in the front of your neck all right it's the shape of a shield right? it sits right about there now it has many many functions all right it supports bone metabolism and the immune system the brain and nervous system the endocrine system the gastrointestinal function liver and gallbladder growth and sex hormones, fat burning, insulin and glucose metabolism, healthy cholesterol levels, proper stomach acid. Your thyroid does a lot, all right? That's why it's such an important uh, gland, and that's why a lot of people have a vast array of symptoms that have thyroid dysfunction because there are so many different things that can break down if you have poor thyroid uh, metabolism or poor thyroid function. Now, every single cell in the human body has receptors for thyroid hormone. Right? And again, that's why you may have so many different symptoms relating to thyroid. These receptors attach to thyroid hormones and then bring them into a cell to perform a function. The key to thyroid health is getting just the right amounts of thyroid hormone into the cell. Not too much, not too little. The right amount of T3 into the cell, that is the key to proper thyroid health. Now, if you don't get enough, you get symptoms of hypothyroidism or low thyroid function. And what are those symptoms? Well, chronic fatigue, weight gain, even with a low calorie diet and exercise, you just can't lose weight. You get depression, constipation symptoms. You can be overly sensitive to cold weather. Right? You can get muscle cramps throughout your body. Poor circulation issues, right? itchy, dry skin, stomach pain, gas and bloating symptoms. Right? You can get dry, brittle hair hair that falls out really easily, all right? both female and men. You can get swelling or edema in the face. Right? And you can also get brain fog. Right? Brain fog is something we see a lot with patients that suffer with low thyroid function. There's a lot of reasons mechanistically why that happens. Now if you get too much symptoms, or if you get too, uh, too much hormone into the cell, you get symptoms of hyperthyroid. Right? So symptoms of hyperthyroid are heart palpitations, inward trembling, increased pulse rate, feelings of nervousness and emotional distress, insomnia, night sweats, difficulty gaining weight. Right? These are all symptoms of hyperthyroidism, meaning too much hormone is getting into the cells. Now, the thing is with Hashimoto's, which is an autoimmune thyroid issue, you can actually have symptoms of both. So a lot of patients will come in and say, well, I have symptoms of both low thyroid function or high thyroid function, or they're giving me a list of symptoms they have. Light bulb's gotta go off, folks, that you need to be tested, and there's a good chance that you have Hashimoto's. And we know that 90% of people that have low thyroid function actually have Hashimoto's, which is an autoimmune issue and not a thyroid issue, all right? So if you have symptoms of both, or you manifest between symptoms throughout the course of months or a year, all right, light bulbs should go off. This is something you need to get checked. All right. So to understand thyroid problems, we need to understand the thyroid. Okay? We have to understand the thyroid gland, and we have to understand how the thyroid gland uh, responds, responds and interacts with the rest of the human body. Okay? So there are a few main systems that have uh, really strong feedback communication, what we call crosstalk, to the thyroid. Right? And it's very, very important that we know this because a lot of times you can have a, a problem somewhere else in the body that in fact is, is altering your thyroid, where your thyroid may not be the problem, it is something else going on your body. And these systems are the immune system, the gut, the brain, as well as the endocrine system. All right? And each one affects another. There's a lot of communication back and forth, and one of those systems regulates the other. So you can have a breakdown in gut function or endocrine function that could cause problems with your thyroid um, indirectly.
So let's talk about how this all works. All right. Here's a nice snapshot of, of um, hormone physiology. All right. And you've got to realize that thyroid function as well as hormone function, it starts in the brain. All right. It starts in the hypothalamus in the brain. Hypothalamus releases hormones to the pituitary gland. Your pituitary gland releases hormones to your thyroid gland, to your adrenal glands, as well as to your reproductive um, organs. All right. So we can have a breakdown or a problem anywhere on this picture right here, and the whole thing could be in disarray or not functioning properly. What we're going to do is we're going to talk about thyroid function and how the thyroid works from a physiological standpoint. Your hypothalamus in your brain releases a hormone called thyroid tropin releasing hormone to the pituitary gland. Okay? Your pituitary gland then releases hormone called TSH, which most of you are familiar with that because that's what your doctor is running all the time to alter or manage uh, medication as well as symptoms. Okay? So pituitary releases TSH to the thyroid gland. Your thyroid gland then releases two main hormones. It releases a hormone known as T4 and T3. Okay? So in the thyroid, thyroid peroxidase, or TPO, binds to iodine. It binds to four molecules of iodine to create T4, and it creates the three molecules of iodine to create T3. Now here's the thing. The thyroid, 93% of the hormone that's released from the thyroid is T4. Only 7% is T3. T3 is the magic hormone. All right? That's the moneymaker, folks. That's the one that gets into the cell for a function. T4 is inactive. It does not do anything. All right? T4 has to go somewhere else in the body to be converted to T3, meaning that it has to lose an iodine molecule to become T3 so that you have adequate T3 function to get into the cells. So thyroid only releases 93% of, of T4, 7% of T3. It only releases 7% of active hormone. What happens is T4 Right, the T3, it'll bind to something called thyroid binding globulin and it'll go elsewhere in the body to be converted. 60% of conversion takes place in the liver, 20% takes place in the gut, and 20% in other tissues like the muscle, heart, and nerves. Okay, so 80% of conversion of inactive T4 to active T3 takes place in the liver and the gut. Right, most thyroid patients have issues with liver and or gut that need to be supported and addressed so that their thyroid can function properly. All right? Patients that are taking medications to affect TSH and are not getting better and still have symptoms, this is something that has to be addressed and looked at. Okay? So T4 goes to the liver to be converted to T3. Once it's converted to T3, it is the active form and now we know it's it's in the bloodstream, it has something called free T3, which is a blood marker that we can look at on a thyroid panel. Free T can get it in, free T3 can get into the cell, binds to a receptor, gets into the cell to perform a function that it needs to perform. Okay? Remember, the key to proper thyroid health is getting just the right amounts of T3 into the cell. So let's do a quick review of what we just talked about, because this is very, very important so you understand how your thyroid works. Thyroid function starts in the brain. Hypothalamus releases TRH, thyroid tropin releasing hormone to the pituitary gland. Your pituitary gland then releases TSH to the thyroid gland. In the thyroid, TPO, thyroid peroxidase, binds to iodine to create T4 and T3. 93% is T4, which is inactive. 7% is T3, which is the active form. <clears throat> they bind to thyroid binding globulin. Thyroid body globulin shuttles them to somewhere else in the body to be converted. 60% in the liver, 20% in the gut, 20% elsewhere. Once converted it into one of those other tissues, it actually can now flow somewhere else to get into a bind to a thyroid receptor to get into a cell to perform a function. Okay? Now here's the thing, folks, is you can have a problem anywhere in that pathway from the hypothalamus, the pituitary gland, all right? and I am just amazed that, uh, folks, your pituitary, your hypothalamus, they can be sick too. Okay, Your thyroid may not just be the only thing that could be malfunctioning. Your brain can have inflammation and be sick. Very, very important. You can have problems with thyroid binding globin. You can have problems with the liver, gut, or other tissues that is preventing you from converting hormone. All right? Or you can have an actual, we call a receptor site issue. You can have a, 
a uh, cell receptor in, uh, resistance issue. Just like somebody can be insulin resistant, you can be thyroid resistant, meaning that thyroid hormone just can't bind or attach to those receptors. You can have a problem anywhere along the way, all right? And most people, they have multiple problems in this pathway, okay? They just don't have a problem in TSH communication or in the thyroid gland. You could have a problem multiple places. So what is a complete and thorough thyroid panel? Okay, the, the thing is, is most of your doctors are looking at TSH and TSH only, all right? And that is a not en enough information to determine what's going on with your body, okay? I always say, how can you determine or interpret what's going on with your body without all the information and with just a very fair few pieces and then just kind of guesstimate the rest of the way, all right? So let's look at what is considered a full and thorough thyroid panel. So the typical tests ordered are TSH, and most of you are familiar with that because that's what your doctor runs all the time to determine, hey, how is your thyroid functioning, and do we need to actually alter your medication dosage to try and get it within that lab range, all right? So, and if you're lucky, possibly your doctor may have ran a T4 on you, okay? Some doctors run a few more things, but the typical uh, practice is, hey, run a TSH and, probably, and possibly a T4 to determine the health of your thyroid, and we know that that is a very, very, very small part of thyroid physiology metabolism is TSH. There's a whole lot more to that story. So what we can do is we can look at a very, very thorough thyroid panel, and what that consists of is the TSH as well as a total T4, but we also include a free thyroxine index, FTI. All right? We also look at a free T3. We also want to look at a, a, a free T4 and a free T3. We want to look at a reverse T3. We want to look at a T3 uptake, okay? How much T3 is actually being taken up by TBG? Okay. We want to look at thyroid binding globulin. We also want to look at antibodies, all right? We look at TSH antibodies to confirm, okay, is there a Graves disease presentation going on? Or we look at TPO and TBG antibodies to diagnose or determine do you have Hashimoto's? And we've stated that 90% of people with low thyroid function have an autoimmune thyroid issue known as Hashimoto's. So if most people, this is a must to actually rule it or rule it out, is your immune system attacking thyroid function? Very important. So this is what we consider a complete thyroid panel. So we know that 90% of patients that have low thyroid function actually have a condition known as Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which is an immune system problem. It's not a thyroid problem, okay? This is where your immune system is attacking your thyroid thinking that it's normal healthy tissue. So let's talk more about Hashimoto's and this immune connection here. So Hashimoto's thyroiditis is an autoimmune disorder in which the patient's immune system attacks the thyroid. Patients that suffer from Hashimoto's experience some or all of hypo and or hyperthyroid symptoms. So a good indication if you have Hashimoto's is if you experience both the symptoms of low thyroid function and high thyroid function, or if you alternate back and forth between the two. 90% right. of hypothyroidism or low thyroid is caused by an autoimmune thyroid condition. What does this mean? It means your immune system is attacking your body, thinking that it, thyroid function is foreign, thinking that it's some type of bacteria, or virus, or foreign particle that's not supposed to be there. Your immune system is doing what it thinks it's supposed to do. Right? So the big thing is, is how do we stop your immune system from attacking your thyroid? Okay? There is no magic pill. There's no, there's no uh, medical approach to prevent this. Okay? What we got to do is we got to dig deep to determine what are these triggers or causes that is causing your immune system to attack and either eliminate or support that. And with that, we get your immune system in better balance so it's not causing this presentation. All right? Now we do this by decreasing inflammation. Detoxifying your, detoxifying your body, as well as improving or balance your immune system function. Hashimoto's and Graves' disease, right, they are not thyroid problems. Your immune system is attacking thyroid peroxidase or thyroid binding globulin in the case of Hashimoto's, or it's attacking thyroid stimulating hormone in the case of Graves' disease. Okay? They are immune problems. There is an imbalance in your immune system that needs to be addressed. Now, how do we determine this? Folks, we got to have proper testing. We got to dig a little deeper. We got to dig a little deeper than any doctor has dug before to determine what are these stressors? What is causing inflammation? What is causing toxicity in your body? What is causing your immune system function to be poor or unbalanced? Okay? When we dig a little deeper and we find the answers to those things, you get your life back. So, majority of chronic health conditions relate back to the immune system. 
All right, there is an autoimmune approach, meaning that your immune system is attacking normal, healthy tissue. All right, why does this happen? And that's what most people ask. Why is my immune system attacking my body, thinking that it's foreign? All right, so there's a couple reasons why. All right, so why would your immune system do this? One big reason is dysregulation of your body. Okay, your immune system is in balance, and the number one reason for this is blood sugar, folks. Blood sugar is the number one stress in the human body. Normal blood sugar should be between 85 and 100. If it gets too high or too low, your body can't function properly, okay? And if you have those blood sugar imbalances, it can actually be a pretty strong trigger for your immune system to go attack. The second thing we see is uh, exhausted or fatigued adrenal glands, okay? Another big, big uh, trigger or dysregulation that can cause your immune system to function. Cortisol is a very, very, uh, is your stress hormone, and it can play a big, big role in how your immune system can attack normal healthy tissue. Other hormone imbalances, all right? Neurological imbalances or neurotransmitter imbalances. You get, you, you get um, deficiencies in dopamine or serotonin, all right? Those chemicals in your brain, they can cause your immune system to go haywire and go awry and start attacking normal healthy tissues. How do you determine if these things are going on? Well, we got to do proper testing. We got to look at blood sugar. We got to look at adrenal function. We got to look at hormones, possibly. We got to assess neurotransmitter as well as neurological function to determine hey, do we have some type of dysregulation going on that is causing our immune system to attack? Right? Another reason why our immune system would attack is because we got an antigen or an active antigen. Right? Your immune system is imbalanced due to inflammation due to an active antigen. So what are antigens? Well, in chronic or hidden infections like bacteria, viruses, or mold. All right? Parasites in the gut. All right? Other infections in other organs like liver flukes. All right? Yeast in, or uh, a fungal infection in the pancreas. Right? Food sensitivities are big. You know, gluten, dairy, soy, yeast, egg, you know, uh, maybe cross-reactive foods. All right? But these foods can wreak havoc on your immune system. If you are, are sensitive to them and undigested particles are leaving the guts, all right, your immune system can start attacking these foods as foreign and start creating inflammation all right? and causing your immune system to start attacking normal healthy tissue. Environmental toxins, all right? undigested food, all right? a condition known as uh, intestinal permeability or leaky gut, which we'll talk more in depth later. All right? Uh, this can cause your immune system to start attacking everything and anything you eat. So patients that get a food panel run and they're sensitive to every single thing they put in their body, they've got leaky gut going on. Undigested food particles are crossing that gut barrier and your immune system is doing what it's supposed to do and attacking that, those particles that are not supposed to cross. Heavy metals, okay? Heavy metal toxicity in the tissues, and especially dental work or mercury in, in dental work. So how do we determine if we have an active antigen? Well, we gotta do proper testing. We gotta do advanced metabolic tests. We gotta do kinesio reflex tests and determine, hey, what antigens or what toxicity issues are going on in your body that are cre that's creating massive inflammation. And when we can dig deep, when we can determine that, hey, we can eliminate and support that and start turning the symptoms that you have around and improving the quality of your life. Now, what we're going to talk about is low thyroid function. Now, we know Hashimoto's is the number one cause of low thyroid function. Over 90% of people with low thyroid function have Hashimoto's disease. All right? But there are actually other causes, and there's actually six main patterns to low thyroid function. We're going to go into these a little in depth because this is important. All right? When we run into a more thorough uh, thyroid panel, we can actually assess what is going on with other parts of your body based on these patterns of low thyroid function. So the first one is we call primary hypothyroidism. All right? This is true dysfunction of the thyroid gland. So the pituitary gland tries to give it a kick in the pants by pumping out extra TSH. Okay? So your, your TSH is elevated. All right? So your pituitary gland is pumping more and more TSH to try and get your thyroid to produce more thyroid hormone. All right? This is the only pattern of hypothyroidism where hormone replacement um, therapy is warranted. Okay? Um, unless there's an autoimmune condition going on. Right? If this is the only thing that's going on with you and you don't have Hashimoto's, you're probably not watching this video. Okay? Because patients that have this pattern, this pattern only, do very, very well with Synthroid and those medications. All right? Because that is the only metabolic pathway from that hypothalamus to the end organ of the cell that is 
is broken down. We know that, hey, that pituitary to thyroid function is the only breakdown. We give a synthroid to start decreasing the amount of TSH that's being put out. You feel a whole lot better. All right. So how do we determine some blood tests? Well, you got a high TSH. All right. An elevated TSH determines you have primary hypothyroidism. The conventional approach, hey, let's give you some medication. Let's give you a hormone, uh, a hormone replacement therapy, synthroid, medications like that. All right. The only thing is, is a typical approach does not screen for Hashimoto's. The functional approach, or what we do in functional medicine is, hey, we give you some additional support for thyroid metabolism, rule out the autoimmune component. If we know that the autoimmune component or Hashimoto's is there, we got to dig a little deeper to find out what is triggering your immune system to attack. The second pattern is hypothyroidism secondary to pituitary hypofunction. The pituitary is fatigued and TSH production is low. Folks, a lot of doctors don't get the concept that your pituitary gland can be sick, okay? Your pituitary gland releases hormones to the thyroid, to your adrenal glands, to your reproductive organs. If you got problems in the way, it can fatigue your pituitary gland, and that could be the problem, and not your thyroid. So why does this happen? Well, chronic stress, busy lifestyle, uh, the standard American diet, uh, heavy caffeine intake, inflammation, bacteria or viruses, there's a lot of things that can cause your pituitary to get fatigued or sick. Postpartum depression is big, all right? Sometimes you, 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 your, your pituitary gland just cannot recover and you just start spiral, spiraling downward, all right? Hyposymptoms treated with hormones, even when blood tests are normal. So you, you go to your doctor and your tests are normal, but he's saying, well, based on your symptoms, let's give you some thin, Synthroid, and you feel better for a little bit, and then the symptoms come back, and that just starts suppressing and fatiguing your pituitary gland, where eventually your pituitary gland will maybe just stop communicating with your thyroid altogether just because you're over-medicated. So what do we see on a blood test? We see, well, we see low TSH levels, typically below that low functional range of 1.8, but typically not so low but one, below 1.5. So usually between 0.5 and 1.8, uh, as well as low um, T3, free T3 levels. Okay, that screams a very that screams a, a pituitary fatigue problem. Conventional medicine, well, no treatment because your labs are normal. All right, or they may give you some hormone replacement therapy based on symptoms, which in turn is going to suppress your pituitary more. Functional approach, number one, we've got to rule out Hashimoto's. And then we got to try and identify and remove these stressors that are causing your pituitary to be stressed or fatigued. And then add in some nutritional support to start increasing the function of your pituitary gland. Third pattern, thyroid underconversion. And this is a big one. All right? The thyroid gland is making enough T4, but the conversion of T4 to T3 is poor. All right, we are not converting the inactive form of T4 to the, in, to the active form of T3, and we know that that conversion takes place in the liver and the gut. All right, 80 percent of conversion of inactive T4 to T3 takes place in the liver and the gut. So typically, if you've got an underconversion problem, you've got a liver problem or you've got a gut problem. That is why it's so important to look at a full thyroid panel to determine if this pattern is going on. So we got poor conversion. Why is that? Well, we talked, we can have a liver problem, we can have a gut problem, we can have chronic stress due to the adrenal glands. Our adrenal glands start pumping out more and more cortisol, which actually can start suppressing the conversion. Free radicals from inflammation. So massive inflammation can do this. So on a blood test, we start seeing, hey, a normal TSH, but we see a low free T3 or total and or total T3. Right. And this is off, you know, typically missed because doctors aren't running free T3 values or told T3 values. And if they do, they're not understanding how to interpret this that we've got to start addressing liver function, gut function, and inflammation. All right. Very, very important on a full pattern, looking at a TSH, a T4, as well as our T3s to determine this under conversion pattern. Okay. Conventional approach. Well, there's no treatment because your TSH is normal, but they may give you medication because of symptoms. All right? And you go through that hormonal honeymoon period where you feel better for a little while and the symptoms come right back because the conversion problem is not being addressed. From a functional approach, number one, we've got to rule out Hashimoto's, the autoimmune component. If that's there, we've got to dig deeper to find out what's causing your immune system to attack. Second thing is, hey, we've got to look for these other stressors. We've got to look at liver function. We've got to look at gut function. We've got to look at the adrenal glands to see, are we pumping out too much cortisol, which is, is suppressing that conversion of T4 to T3. Once we identify those stressors, we can eliminate and support them, and then we can actually add in some nutritional support to improve the conversion of T4 to T3. 
The next pattern is thyroid overconversion and decreased thyroid binding globulin. All right? This is where we have too much active T3 being made and our cells just get overwhelmed. There's too much T3 going into the cells, eventually you might develop a thyroid resistance, but just too much is, is, is bombarding the cells. All right? And then there's too little thyroid binding globulin, which means there's too much free T3, so that T3 can't attach to the thyroid binding globulin, there's too much flowing around in the blood to bombard your cells. So why does this happen? Well, typically due to blood sugar issues, okay? Insulin resistance or PCOS, all right, polycystic ovarian syndrome all right, causes an increased testosterone in women, resulting in too much T4 converted into T3 and too little thyroid binding globulin production. Okay? So we have to look at the whole story. We've got to look at testosterone levels. We've got to see what your blood sugar is doing. All right? Those are the two things that have to be addressed in this scenario. So on a blood test, your TSH is normal, but your free T4 and your free T3 are very high. Conventional approach. Well, the doctor's not going to do anything because your TSH is normal. But then they may give you medications because of symptoms, which is going to let you, you know, feel better for a little while possibly. But the problem of the insulin resistance and the elevated testosterone is not being addressed or supported. So what do we have to do from a functional approach? Well, we've got to control blood sugar. we got to look at um, test testosterone function, okay? So we've got to reverse the insulin resistance, possibly got to look at the liver function to, to improve clearance of hormones, all right? Uh, and when we do that, this pattern slows down and improves, okay? So blood sugar and liver detoxification to balance hormones are very, very key with this type of presentation. And the only way you can determine this is by running a, a full thyroid panel to see if this is a pattern going on with you. The next pattern, thyroid binding globulin elevation. So there's too much thyroid binding globulin in the blood, and because of this, there's too little free T3 going on. Okay, so you got to run to see your th how much thyroid binding globulin is there. Just say, okay, are we under converting because there's few, too little uh, T uh, free T3, or is there so much thyroid binding globulin that it's just not releasing the T3 into the blood? It's just continuing to bind and attach to these carriers that it just cannot release it to get into the cell. Why does this happen? Well, typically due to uh, estrogen, birth control pills can do it. Um, it causes an increase in estrogen, which leads to increased thyroid binding globulin presentation. Okay? So very, very important to understand, are we on any type of estrogen replacement therapy? And if we are, hey, we've got to have the discussion, what can we do internal? What can we do to support this pattern where there's increased thyroid binding globulin? So on a blood test, we see normal TSH, normal free T3, normal free T4, and T or sorry, TSH is normal, free T4, free T3, as well as T3 uptake are very, very low, okay, on this pattern. Now, conventional approach, your doctor is not gonna prescribe anything because your TSH is normal. But then again, they may give you some medication based on symptoms. The functional approach, number one, we gotta rule out autoimmunity, rule out Hashimoto's, and then we gotta clear the body of excess estrogens. Typically that is in the forms of liver detoxification. So nutritional support for liver and gallbladder to detoxify that to help clear out the excess estrogen. And with that, your body start, stops producing an, um, the increased amount of thyroid binding globulin. All right? And that's allowing you to have more free T3 in the blood. The sixth pattern is thyroid resistance. With this pattern, your pituitary and thyroid glands are fine. Hormone level looks good, all right? but the free T3 just can't get into the cell for some reason. All right? The hormones are not getting into the cell, and because of this, you're getting all the symptoms of hypothyroidism. So all your blood work looks great from a functional perspective. It looks normal, but thyroid hormone just can't get into the cell. Why does this happen? Well, typically due to adrenal problems. All right? Chronic stress stimulates the adrenal glands to produce too much cortisol, and because of this, the thyroid... Uh, receptors become resistant to thyroid hormone and it cannot get into the cells. They just bounce right off of those thyroid receptors. So hormones bounce right off. Also, elevated homocysteine, all right, increased inflammation. You can have a genetic predisposition to hypothyroidism and improper monitoring of, um, um, of hormone replacement therapy. So your doctor is not um, monitoring that enough and you could develop a resistance pattern. So blood tests, like I said, they're all normal. Conventional approach, well, nothing because your blood works normal. They may give you some medication based on symptoms. You feel better for a little while, but that's typically going to lead to more of a resistance problem. What's a functional approach? Number one, got to rule out the, auto, the autoimmune component, got to rule out Hashimoto's, and then we got to address adrenal function and inflammation. 
okay? Address adrenal function, as well as the increased cortisol and the increased inflammation. Homocysteine is a marker we look at to determine inflammation. Okay. Remember, the key to good thyroid health is getting just enough of free T3 into the cell. Not too much, not too little. All right. So by looking at a complete thyroid panel, you can get a better picture to, fall, to see if you fall into one of those six patterns of, of low thyroid function. And if you do, there is a better approach from a functional medicine perspective to address, support, and even reverse some of those, uh, the pattern that you may fall into. And with that, you feel better and you get your life back. Now, to obtain maximum healing, we have to do three things. We've got to decrease inflammation, detoxify, and improve or balance our immune function. All right? Now, people that suffer with chronic health conditions typically have multiple symptoms. All right? Now, what happens is you go to your doctor with a certain symptom. You get a medication for this symptom. You get another medication for this symptom. And the problem is, is nobody's asking why. All right? Symptoms is your body's way of expressing that something is not right. And nobody's asking why. Nobody's digging deeper to find the underlying causes of why you're, you're feeling this way. Okay? So what happens is maybe you get a blood test or based on your symptoms you're given a label or a diagnosis. All right? The problem with that is your doctor is looking at you through one set of lenses all right? and not asking why. Why is your body expressing itself this way with these symptoms? What are the causes that are allowing your body to break down? So what what I want to do is go over a, a, the, a few of the main symptoms of patients that I see in my office, all right, so we can kind of delve into this a little bit deeper. So patients that I sit down with typically have multiple or all of these symptoms, and you may as well. So patients with chronic health conditions have fatigue, all right, tired all the time, all right, um, and dependent on caffeine, all right, pain, all right, chronic pain, um, you hurt all the time. Digestive issues, all right? gas, bloating, okay? uh, diarrhea, constipation, headaches. All right? Normal headache okay, is not one or two a week. Okay? Numbness or tingling. And you can get numbness or tingling in the hands, feet, and get burning. And this can happen due to multiple reasons, due to blood sugar, due to hormone imbalance, due to structural um, causes. All right? Depression or brain fog. All right? Patients with chronic health conditions, they have sleep issues, all right? difficulty falling asleep, difficulty staying asleep, groggy in the morning, you feel tired even after six, seven, or eight hours of sleep. Okay? And another thing is weight. All right? You have difficulty losing weight even with a low calorie diet all right, and exercise. All right? Now there are more symptoms, but these are the main symptoms of patients that I consult with on a daily basis. Okay? Now here's the thing. It doesn't matter what the diagnosis or the label is. Doesn't matter what the diagnosis you've been given is. Okay? Doesn't matter if it's thyroid disease, diabetes, peripheral neuropathy, fibromyalgia, okay? chronic fatigue, neurodevelopmental diseases like autism or ADHD, neurodegenerative diseases like dementia, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, all right? IBS. Folks, it does not matter what the label is. Okay? The fact is, right, it is, physiolo it is physiological impossible for you to be just suffering with fill in the blank. Right? It is physiological impossible for you to be suffering with just thyroid disease, with diabetes, with fibromyalgia, with neuropathy, with dementia. Okay? What you are suffering from is what we call a web of physiological dysfunction. Right? Now here's the thing you most likely have multiple symptoms, all right? And you cannot look at somebody through one set of lenses, all right? In order to obtain, uh, obtain maximum healing, you have to treat the person and not the part. Let me say that again. In order to obtain maximum healing, you have to treat the person and not the part, all right? So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna talk about what is this web of physiological dysfunction? But before we do that, what I want you to do in a second is I want you to pause or stop this DVD. All right? With this DVD, you should have received some paperwork. But what I want you to do is flip to, towards the back of that paperwork, and what I want you to do is flip to the form that says Neurological Assessment Form. 
there's 41 questions on there, yes and no questions. All right. For each question, what I want you to do is circle yes or no. And after you do that, what I want you to do is flip towards the back to the next questionnaire that says metabolic assessment form. All right. And on that questionnaire, what I want you to do is for each question, each category, I want you to circle a one, two, or three and how that relates to you. A zero if it doesn't apply, or a three if it's something you experience all the time or pretty, uh, pretty frequently. Or circle a one or two if you're somewhere in between. So what we're going to do is we're going to use these questionnaires while we're explaining this web of physiological dysfunction so you can get a pretty good idea of what your web is and how we can address that. How can we obtain maximum healing specific to you? All right. So take five or ten minutes, fill this out, and when you're done, let's start this DVD back up again and get going. Okay, now that you've filled out those questionnaires, the neurological assessment form as well as that metabolic assessment form, we're ready to get started to build your web. Okay, now why is this important? Like I stated, it is physiologically impossible for you to be suffering with just you name the condition. Okay, what you're experiencing is a web of physiological dysfunction. And in order to obtain maximum healing, you've got to treat the whole person. So what we're going to do is we're going to build your web. All right, so if you haven't filled those questionnaires, please do so because it's going to relate a lot to what's going on with you and more importantly it's going to help us formulate a systematic approach of what are the areas that we need to address okay what are the, some of the underlying causes that have to be supported in order for you to get your life back okay so let's go and get started all right like I said doesn't matter what the label of the condition is you have to treat the whole person right so the middle of this web is you the person Okay. First thing I want you to do is take that neurological assessment form, the questionnaire that had a bunch of yeses and nos. All right. Now, if you circled more than five yeses on that page, so go ahead and count them up. If you circle more than five yeses, you not only have a problem with whatever diagnosis you've been given, you've got a brain problem. All right. So the first part of that web is our brain. Now, how do we know have a brain problem? Well, we circled five, you know, more than five yeses, but what we can do is we can get a little bit more specific and we can talk about different areas of the brain and what some of the symptoms you're experiencing mean. Okay? And what we do in our office is we can use functional neurological tests to help us determine where are these brain imbalances and what can we do to help support them and to rebuild those pathways so you don't experience those symptoms anymore. So first area of the brain we're gonna talk about is the frontal lobe. Now, how do you know you have a problem with your frontal lobe? Okay. Well, maybe we're starting to develop personality changes. Maybe we're starting to make poor decisions in life. Okay. If you experience those symptoms, you probably have a problem with your frontal lobe. Okay. Next to your brain is our parietal lobe. Okay. And our parietal lobe, our parietal lobe is uh, helps us feel. Okay. So if you're sitting there and you're hurting, all right, you're sitting here watching this video and you hurt you possibly have a problem with your parietal lobe. If you experience numbness, tingling, or burning, for instance, somebody that has peripheral neuropathy, you may not only have a problem with your hands and feet, but there's a good chance you have a problem with your parietal lobe, and that has to be addressed as well. Okay. Another area of your brain I want to talk about is the temporal lobe. Your temporal lobe is responsible for memory. Okay, So if we are walking into rooms and forgetting where we walked in there, or forgetting where we put our keys more frequently, or you're in the middle of a conversation with somebody and you forget what you're talking about, right? you've got a problem with your temporal lobe. Okay? So that's the first part of the web. It's the first part that needs to be supported or in, and addressed. Okay? Now, what I want you to do is turn to that metabolic assessment form. Okay? It's that questionnaire that's got a bunch of zeros, one, twos, and threes. Category one, all right, that section deals with colon. So if you circled one, twos, and threes in section one, not only do you have a problem with whatever diagnosis you've been given, but you've also got a problem with your colon. All right. Now, category two, category two has to deal with our intestines. So if we circled one, twos, and threes in category two, 
we've got a problem with our intestines. And one thing that we have to look at here is something known as leaky gut syndrome or intestinal permeability. Okay. So the next section, section three, has to do with chemical exposure. I'm going to put that over here. So if we circled one, twos, and threes, if we have an intolerance to smells or jewelry or shampoos, okay, there's a good chance that we've got some type of chemical exposure or some type of toxin that is expressing itself as in terms of symptoms you're experiencing. All right. Category four is stomach. So if you circled one, twos, and threes in category four, you've got a stomach problem. Okay? And typically it's low stomach function, known as hypochlorhydria. Okay? Now category five also deals with the stomach. So if you circled one, twos, and threes in category five, you not only have one stomach problem, but you've got two stomach problems. Okay? Category six, the small intestines. So if we circled one, twos, and threes in category six, right, we've got a problem with our small intestines. That section also has a few, a few questions there about pancreatic function. Okay, so if we circle one, twos, and threes, we've got a problem with our small intestines and or our pancreas, our pancreatic function. Category seven deals with our gallbladder. So if we circled one, twos, and threes in that category, we've got a gallbladder problem. All right, but you say, well, I've had my gallbladder removed. Okay, if you've had your gallbladder removed, and nobody's recommended that you need some type of gallbladder support going forward, shame on them, all right? You need your gallbladder, you need bile for proper digestion and absorption of foods, especially fatty acids, okay? So if you experience any of the symptoms, or you circled one, twos, and threes in that section, you've got a gallbladder problem, and we've got to address that. Category eight. Category eight deals with our liver, as well as detoxification, because we know that our liver is the main organ that is responsible for detoxification. So if we circled one, twos, and threes in that category, we've got a problem with liver function, and that's got to be addressed. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a big circle around those right there. Okay, And I'm just going to label that as gut. Okay. Now, why is that important? Okay. So if we've got problems in one or, or any or multiple of those areas, we've got a gut problem. Okay. And we know that 80% of our immune system is in our gut. Okay. So we talk about to obtain maximum healing, we've got to improve and balance our immune function. The only way to do that is to fix our gut, okay? Now, we also know that our gut has a strong correlation to brain function, okay? If you go to CyrexLabs.com, they've got a great video explaining the autoimmune connection between, grain, uh, between brain and gut function, okay? So typically, if we've got a problem with our gut, We've got a problem with our brain and vice versa. Okay? Gut function is also important because we know that in our gut, 80% of conversion of thyroid hormone T4 is converted into T3. And T3 is the magic hormone that thyroid patients and everybody needs to be able to function properly. Uh, our thyroid's a gas pedal all right, of our metabolism. And you need the, just the right amount of T3 in order for your body to function properly. So if we've got a gut problem, we're going to have a conversion problem of T4 to T3. All right? So let's continue looking at this web. The next category we're going to talk about is 
blood sugar. Okay. Now, folks, blood sugar is the number one stressor in the human body. All right? The number one stressor in the human body. Our blood sugar needs to be between 85 and 99. All right? That is the optimal blood sugar levels. If our blood sugar gets too low or too high, we got problems. Okay? So, section number nine deals with blood sugar. So if you circle one, twos, and threes in section nine, we've got a blood sugar problem. And typically that section deals with people with low blood sugar. Okay? Or somebody that's hypoglycemic. Very, very common in females. If you circled one, twos, and threes in section 10, well, that is high blood sugar, insulin resistance, pre-diabetic or diabetic. Okay? So Blood sugar being the number one stress in the body is something that we have to get under control immediately. All right? Moving on. The next section, section number uh, six, or uh, eleven, sorry, deals with our adrenal glands. Now our adrenal glands are our stress glands. Okay. Our adrenal glands, they release two, multiple hormones, okay, but we're going to talk about the two main functions that our adrenal glands have. First thing is, our adrenal glands release cortisol, okay? Cortisol does a lot of things, but here's the thing, folks, right? Cortisol is toxic to our brain, and cortisol is primarily toxic to our temporal lobe. So if we've got adrenal problems, those adrenal problems could be leading to a lot of neurological symptoms or expression, okay? Possibly brain fog, inflammation, right? Cortisol is toxic to the brain, especially the temporal lobe, especially the hippocampus in the brain, in that temporal lobe, all right? Second thing is, is the adrenals release epinephrine and norepinephrine, okay? Now, when those hormones are released, they're excitatory, right? Meaning that they will increase pain. So if we have chronic pain, if we have fibromyalgia, right, if we hurt all the time, we have to look at our adrenal glands and how that plays into it. Okay? So if we circled one, twos, and threes in section 11 or section 12, we've got adrenal problems. All right, section 11 being low adrenal function and section 12 being high adrenal function. Category number 13. Category 13 deals with pH. All right, and we know we need to be alkaline to heal. We know our pH needs to be between 6.4 and 7.0 in order to obtain maximum healing. Now, category 14 and 15 have to deal with our thyroid. Now, if you circle one, twos, and threes, okay, in category number 14, we've got a low thyroid problem or possibly an underconversion problem with our thyroid. If we circled one, twos, and threes in category 15, typically we have hyperthyroid function. Now, folks, if you circled one, twos, and threes in both sections, there's a good chance that we've got an autoimmune thyroid uh, condition going on, known as Hashimoto's. Okay? So if you circled one, twos, and threes, and you're experiencing both symptoms of low thyroid function and high thyroid, high thyroid function, good chance that we have an immune issue going on with our thyroid. Category 16, section 16. And category 17, have to deal with the pituitary gland. Now, category 16 deals with low pituitary function, and category 17 deals with high pituitary function. So if you circled one, twos, and threes in those sections, there's a good chance that our pituitary gland is, is sick. Our pituitary gland is in the brain, and it is the main gland that's the starting point for all hormone function, for thyroid, for the adrenal glands, for our reproductive organs. Okay? So if our pituitary gland is sick, it needs to be supported and addressed. 
Now, the remaining sections have to deal with hormones. So if you circled one, twos, and threes in your man in the male section, right? If we circled one, twos, and threes in section 18, there's a good chance we may have a prostate issue. If we circled one, twos, and threes in section 19 or category 19, we're suffering something known as andropause, okay? Low testosterone. Females, right? If we are menstruating and we circled one, twos, and threes, we've got a hormone problem there. And if we're in menopause and we circle one, twos, and threes, we've got a hormonal problem going on as well. And hormones have to be looked at. Okay? We've got to look at our pregnenolone, our progesterone, our estrogens, our testosterones. All right? Folks, this is why you have to address the whole person in order to obtain maximum healing. Okay? You can't just address the part or you're never going to get your life back. Okay? In order to obtain maximum healing, you have to have optimal function of all of these. Okay? Now, this is a complex web. What we're going to do is we're going to find out what your web is. And what we're going to do is we're going to start addressing your web, supporting your web so that you can get your life back and you can obtain maximum healing going forward. So my job is to look look at things and dig a little deeper than your doctor you work with, okay? So I, I, I look at tests that no other doctor will order, okay? Or think about order because my job is to dig deeper to find out what are those metabolic imbalances that are causing your body to break down. So what are some of the advanced metabolic tests that I look at in my office? Now this isn't all of them, but these are some of the main ones that we order and look at with patients. So first thing is, is symptoms of chronic health conditions are a sign of metabolic imbalances. So we gotta do proper tests. And first thing is we gotta do a complete blood panel. We gotta look at a complete thyroid panel. We gotta look at vitamin D levels, anemia markers, kidney function, blood sugar levels, cerebellar antibodies, C-reactive protein, all right? Measure cardiac inflammation. Hormone panel, homocysteine, another inflammation marker. Homocysteine sometimes if it's too low can tell us, hey, we may have a folic acid issue or a genetic folic acid issue. We can look at immune panels and viral panels, look at a Th1 versus Th2 subsets, look at cytokines, look at natural killer cells, right? We can look at an uh, adrenal stress index, right? We can look at our 24 cortisol load. We know cortisol is supposed to be highest first thing in the morning and continually decrease and be lowest at night, meaning that, hey, it's high, it's your internal alarm clock that wakes you up, and as the day goes on, it gets low, where sometime around 10 o'clock at night, it's the lowest, and you crawl in those covers and fall asleep nice and fast. All right. We also look at uh, the cortisol rhythm and determine how that relates to melatonin for sleep patterns. Look at DHEA. Look at hormone patterns like our estrogen and testosterone. Food sensitivity panels. All right. Food sensitivity panels to gluten, soy, yeast, egg, milk, as well as other cross-reactive foods. Are those foods creating inflammation in your body? Stool microbial index. All right. Looking for gut infections such as parasites, yeast, bacteria, H. pylori infections. Right? Also look at, hey, what's the state of our good, healthy gut bacteria? What's the state of our immune system? We know 80% of our immune system is in our gut, so do we have enough good, healthy gut bacteria? Or do we have a condition known as dysbiosis, meaning we have poor relationship of good to bad gut bacteria? Good to bad gut bacteria. Okay? You can also look at an organic acid test. All right? This shows us how well, our, how well is our energy metabolism. Are there any breakdowns that we can support nutritionally because we're not able to um, metabolize energy per efficiently. Okay. We've got to do a heavy metal toxicity screening possibly. All right, so let's go through this real quick. Lab testing. All right, got to remember lab ranges are very, very inaccurate. They're very, very broad. All right, blood work, complete metabolic, uh, beta metabolic panel, blood glucose, liver, kidneys, iron levels, vitamin D, direct protein, homocysteine. All right, CBC with auto differential, a full thyroid panel. All right, looking at our TSH and all the T3 and T4 hormones, as well as our thyroid antibodies. Right? Lipid panel, cholesterol, HDL, LDL, triglycerides, etc. Got to look at a sensitivity reactivity testing. All right? I use a lab called CyrexLabs.com. Right? Go to CyrexLabs.com, look at their website. Some of the arrays or tests we look at is number one, we look at array two, which is a leaky gut panel all right? or intestinal permeability panel. This will determine, hey, are we, is our immune system attacking undigested food particles or is it attacking, is it attacking that, um, our gut tissue? 
right? Is it an inflammation issue due to infection? Is it a, a tear or damage to the tight junctions, those zippers that unzip so f um, minerals and vitamins can get through them? Or do we actually have a tear to our gut lining, all right? That test will tell us what type of leaky gut presentation you have. Second thing is RA3, which is a pretty in-depth gluten panel, all right? Most doctors run for gluten testing alpha-gliadin as well as transglutaminase um, antibody testing. All right, and those are great because that helps give you a, a diagnosis of celiac, but gluten sensitivity and celiac disease are not the same thing. They're two completely th different things. If you Google gluten sensitivity and whatever, gluten sensitivity and thyroid, gluten sensitivity and fibromyalgia, gluten sensitivity and diabetes, gluten sensitivity and Alzheimer's or ALS, all right, you'll see multiple, multiple publications on how gluten can affect the human body. All right. So this array three shows us a bigger breakdown of gluten and if you're reacting the same way. I have a lot of patients that come in and say, well, my doctor tested me for gluten and I was fine and they keep eating it and they keep feeling horrible. All right. And we run this array three on them and yeah, they're fine with the things their doctor tests them with, but they may have uh, antibody or an immune response to other parts of, of gluten. All right. So it's a more in-depth gluten panel. Array 4 is a more in-depth food panel, shows us cross-reactive foods, all right, dairy, uh, soy, uh, egg, um, other grains, all right, um, chicken, coffee, all right, we look at other foods and are those foods creating inflammation, is our immune system attacking those foods, thinking that they're foreign, causing our, our immune system to go haywire, creating a lot of inflammation. Array 5 is an autoimmune panel, okay, and it can show us different tissue antibodies, the thyroid, brain, uh, pancreatic function, okay, so that's something else that we can look at and say, okay, our immune system is attacking our body, but what tissues is our immune system attacking, so we know that, hey, we can support this function or that function based on that test. Next thing we look at is organic acid test, all right, use a lab called Metametrics for that, all right, it's a urine test, what that test measures is fatty acid metabolism, carbo high metabolism, energy production markers, B-complex markers, methylation cofactor markers, neurotransmitter markers, detoxification, all right? Very, very important. Shows us how well is our body function, how well are we taking the foods we eat and converting them to energy, all right? Next thing is a stool microbial. Shows us yeast, bacteria, virus, shows us the health of, the, of our, our immune system, the our good bacteria versus the bad uh, gut bacteria. I use metametrics for that, for that test as well. Next thing is an adrenal stress index. Right, we talked about cortisol. All right, this is the lab. It's a salivary test. We look at your cortisol four times through the day to say, hey, what is that circadian pattern? What's that circadian rhythm? All right, is that cortisol load normal first thing in the morning to at nighttime when you go to bed? All right. We also got to look at a hormone panel. Okay, we can do that via blood or hormone or saliva. I like saliva because typically it's unbound. All right, I think it's a little more accurate. But we got to look at our estrogens and testosterones. So how do we do it? How do we help you? How do we help you get your life back? How do I reinvent your life? Okay. I use individually tailored natural protocols to allow your body to achieve maximum healing. Folks, I said it's all about maximum healing. It has been individually tailored because no two patients are alike. I said everybody's toxic load, everybody's metabolic triggers are different. No two patients I can solve with, their issues are exactly the same. This is how we're going to help you heal. Our goal is to decrease inflammation, detoxify your body, and increase the function and balance your immune function, your immune system. Okay? It's as simple as that. All right? it, it, it gets more complex, but when it's all said and done, it comes full circle to those three principles and those three things we have to address. So our goal, or my goal, is to help you find the most effective natural protocols to enhance your body's function so that you have the best chance possible of living a long and happy life. Right? My job is to have maximum positive impact on everybody I come in contact with. I want to reinvent your life. So how are we going to help your chronic condition? Find, through your lab test or kinesio test, the antigen or cause of dysregulation. Okay? Remove the cause of dysregulation through specific dietary and nutritional support. Repair damaged tissues with specific, specific nutritional supplements. Balance your immune system with specific nutrients and vitamins. Find through neurological tests any imbalances in frequency of firing or any imbalances in, in brain function and support that in the office or at home. Improve your brain function with oxygen as well as brain-based therapies.
All right? So if we're having those neurological imbalances, they've got to be supported as well. So how do we help you? Like I said, decrease inflammation, detoxify, and improve your immune system. First thing, got to get your pH between 6.4 and 7.0. Got to be alkaline to heal. All right? So something that we need to monitor on a regular basis to miss, make sure that your first morning urine pH is between 6.4 and 7.0. Why first morning? Well, your body heals through the course of the night. Okay? So how do we do this? Well, we can juice organic vegetables, vitamin D, aloe, minerals like calcium and magnesium. Second thing is detoxification. This is very important. All right? There are different things that we can do to detoxify. All right? There are different modalities like rife, foot baths. All right? We can use light therapy. We can use mud packs to address interferential fields. Uh, inter um, um, electromagnetic fields, any type of dental work, all right? Cell phones can play in a little bit of it. So it's not about just detoxifying organs, it's finding what are those external stressors that are wreaking havoc as well. We can do exercise with oxygen therapy, all right? Like I said, you need oxygen for your body to be able to heal and survive. You need two things, oxygen and sugar. So we gotta infuse your body with some enhanced air. Nutrition and natural protocols based on lab tests and kinesio, all right? Based on advanced metabolic tests and what those reflex points tell us, hey, come up with a protocol of what is the nutritional approach that we have to put in place. Next thing is neurological testing and support, all right? What are the, what is, what's your brain telling us that is breaking down from a neurological perspective? What symptoms are you having? And what are the things that we can do to continue to stimulate or activate that so that your brain function does not continue to break down? Okay. So, as this, I want to ask you this question. Do you have symptoms because you're unhealthy? Or are you unhealthy because of your symptoms? Well, I like to think that you have symptoms because you're unhealthy. So, here's the thing. You're unhealthy due to stress. All right, there's three types of stresses, physical, chemical, and emotional. Physical stressors are things like trauma, you know, car accident, slip or fall, sitting at a computer all day, you know, sleeping improper. Uh, those are physical stresses. Chemical stresses are things like food, medication, smoking, alcohol, other toxins you're exposed to. Emotional stress. Everybody's got emotional stress. You know, if you're married, you have kids, job, we all have emotional stress. Okay. Now, as stress builds up over time your body breaks down. And when that happens, you develop symptoms. All right? So, you're unhealthy, all right? Your body breaks down, you get symptoms. You go to your doctor. Let's say those symptoms are headaches. So you go to your doctor with headaches. You say, doc, I've been having all these headaches right here. He says, great, we've got some medications that can address that. We've got Tobamax, Imitrex. They're even doing Botox injections now, okay? Now, you get the medication, you go on that, what happens? Hey, our symptoms improve. Headaches diminish quite a bit. The only thing is, you're still left with stress. You're still unhealthy. Right? So three months later, you go back to your doctor, you start developing another symptom. You start developing acid reflux. He says, well, we've got some great medications for that to help with those reflux symptoms. We can give you Prilosec, we can give you Nexium. You start taking that, guess what? Symptom goes away. What are you left with? Well, you're still unhealthy. That underlying cause has not been being addressed. So let's say six months later, you go back to your doctor with another symptom. You tell him, you know what, I hurt everywhere, all right? I hurt everywhere and I'm tired all the time. He says, we got medications for that. So he gives you Lyrica or Cymbalta. You start taking that, you know what, hey, that symptoms improve, starts going away. What are you left with? You're still unhealthy. That underlying cause has not been identified. So now what happens, let's say a year later you go back to your doctor, you develop another side effect. Let's say you're actually getting another symptom. You start to get in a symptom of a side effect from these medications you're taking, which is high blood pressure. Because we know that most of these medications can create high blood pressure. So you go to your doctor and you say, doctor, every time that I'm sitting down, every time I go to stand up, I get lightheaded and dizzy. He says, you know what, we got a million medications for that. He puts you on a medication for your high blood pressure, your symptoms improve. What are you left with? You're still unhealthy. You're not addressing the underlying cause. Next thing you know, you're on four, six, seven, 13 different medications for this symptom, for this symptoms, and nobody is addressing the underlying cause. And at this point, the only thing that you can conclude, can conclude is, is that what you're doing is not working. Nobody is digging deeper. Nobody is looking at the big picture. Nobody is taking off those glasses and not, and, and 
stop looking at you through one set of lenses and saying, all right, what is this web of physiological dysfunction and how does it intertwine? Now, the World Health Organization studied over 100 healthcare systems of all the major industrialized countries in the world. The United States ranked number one in crisis care. Right? We have the best medical care in the world, the best medical doctors, the best medical facilities. If I break my arm, if I have a stroke, this is the country I want to be in. Now, those same studies showed that in 1997, the USA ranked 34th in health care. In 2000, we ranked 37th. 2007, we ranked 48th. In 2009, we ranked 50th. The U.S. ranked number 41 in life expectancy. We spend more in health care than any other country in the world, but we have the worst health of any industrialized nation. Why are we number one? This is why. Folks, we are taking acute medicine and trying to manage chronic health conditions with that acute medicine, and it's not working. All right? This isn't me getting up on a soapbox. This is the World Health Organization statistical study saying this. Acute care, we're the best. When it comes to chronic health care, we fall way short. Right? We're taking acute medicine and trying to treat and manage chronic conditions with acute medicine and it's not working. All right? There's more. United, health, uh, United States health statistics. One in four will die with a heart disease. One in two and a half will develop cancer. One in four will die from cancer. One in three will develop diabetes. One in three, will develop di or one in three women are clinically depressed. One in six couples are infertile. One in six kids have a neurological condition, ADD or autism. And that number is getting, that ratio is getting smaller and smaller. One in eight have an autoimmune disease. One in six women have a thyroid problem. Right? Folks, these are all chronic health conditions. Right? We have never been sicker than we are today. Something's wrong. Right? After years of this treatment, why are you still not better? Right? This is what your doctor tells you. Maybe it's because you're getting old. I hear that all the time. I'm getting these symptoms because I'm getting old. Right? Maybe it's all in your head. Doctor's trying to kick you out the door. You know what? Hey, if that medication's not working, it must be you. Maybe it's because you're lazy. You know, you need to get off your butt and exercise a little bit more. Maybe you just need to exercise more. Right? Maybe you really need psych psychotic education. Maybe you really are depressed. Maybe it is all in your head. All right? These are the things that your doctor's telling you. Or maybe someone has dropped the ball and is not doing a necessary test to give you the proper health care. Makes sense, right? Somebody's not digging deeper to find out what are those underlying triggers or those underlying causes that are creating your body to break down and be unhealthy.